Hello, my dear friends of yours. My name is Ruben Badali, and welcome back to my main YouTube channel. Stravo, moi ima je Ruben Badalian, i dobro došli ponovo na moj glavni kanal. And today, I'm going to talk about what did Yugoslav people think about Joseph Broz Tito. Uh, Joseph Broz Tito was the former president and also general secretary of the Communist Party of the ex Yugoslavia when it became a communist nation, independent communist nation. So I'm going to talk about the biography of him and then I'm going to tell you what they think, what the Yugoslav people think about Tito as a person. So Joseph Rose Tito was born in on May 7th, 1892 in Kumrovic, Croatia. But at that time, it was under the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And at that time, the Balkan Peninsula was occupied by the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Ottoman Empire. It was The Balkan Peninsula was dominated by the two mighty uh, empires, dominant empires at that time, at that period of time. And so Tito's mother was Slovenian while Tito's father was Croatian. And it's also very interesting of mentioning because Tito was born as Joseph Broz, and Tito was not his real name, but his real name was Joseph Broz. In the same way, like Stalin's real name was not Joseph Stalin, but it was Joseph Jugashvili, and the same way as also Lenin, Vladimir Lenin, but his real name was Vladimir Ulyanov. And so as a young teenager, Tito would work as a laborer because he worked in uh, different companies during that time. And also, he, when World War I broke out in 1914, following the assassination of the Archduke Francis Ferdinand in Sarajevo, Austria-Hungary, which is now present-day Bosnia, by a small group of, of Serbian terrorists, which was what, in which the assassination was carried out by a small terror, Serbian terrorist organization. And so Tito was conscripted into the Austro-Hungarian army where he would fight against the Serbs and um, the Russians and the other allied powers. And so Tito would be later captured by the, by the Russians and between 1915 and 1916, just almost two years or one year after World War I started. And so during his imprisonment, imprisonment in Russia, the Russian revolutions of 1917 broke out and Russia was in a mess because the Russian Empire would be ultimately destroyed and uh, the Romanov dynasty would be all executed. And so the Germany at the time gave Vladimir Lenin and his Bolshevik organization money so they could go to Russia and and remove Russia out of World War One, and also create uh, Russia as a communist nation. That was Germany's goal. Germany wanted to send Lenin to Russia and create a commu communist revolution and create a communist country in, in Russia and also remove Russia out of World War One in which Germany and Lenin was very successful in doing so. And so during his imprisonment in Russia, during the revolutions, Tito would soon join the communists, uh, the future communist party of Soviet Union, where he would join the Bolshevik uh, army, where he would fight against uh, the white army in uh, Russia. Because at that time there was the Russian civil war, which was thought between Lenin's communist Bolshevik army or organization and it was thought by the white army which was anti-communist and so right after world war one in 1918 the kingdom of serb croats and slovenes was formed krajevina serba hervati isloveni was formed and um and then a year later in 1919 the Communist Party of Yugoslavia was formed, in which Ch Tito would soon join that organization. And so 
And two years later, in 1921, the Communist Party of Yugoslavia was banded. It was made illegal. And so Tito still and still took part in various communist activities in Yugoslavia. And as a result, he would be fired from many jobs because of his communist activities Tito was participating in. And he was uh, very poor at the time because he was getting fired from a lot of jobs because of his activities. He took part in the outlawed communist party and he had a family at the time. And so at that moment, he went to, uh, to continue his education and he went to the ex-Soviet Union, which was uh, Russia, which is present day Russia now. And that's where he received his education. And then he would soon fight in Spain, or that was known as the Spanish Civil War at that time. And so that Spanish Civil War, that was thought between uh, the Republicans, that was the Soviet Union, and the Nationalists, that was basically Nazi Germany and Italy. And so Tito would fight on the support of Soviet Union and the Spanish Civil War there. And so Spanish Civil War, that was thought between 1936 until 1939 when World War II broke out. And so uh, at that time, uh, Tito would also make friends with uh, Edward Kral, who was a Slovenian and Yugoslav uh, politician. And he would soon be a political figure in the communist Yugoslavia after World War II. And so uh, also at that time, there was a lot of hatred between uh, Serbs and Croats because there was an assassination in uh, parliament on the Croatian peasant party leader Stepan Radic in Belgrade. And that sparked the tension between uh, ethnic tensions between Serbs and Croats. And that would still continue uh, still today. And, on to, and also even in the 1990s when the former Yugoslavia came down so or communist Yugoslavia came down at the time. And so also during the Kingdom of Yugoslavia era, uh, fascism would take place in uh, Germany and Italy and, and soon in Croatia as well. And so also at that time in 1934, the Yugoslav king, Alex, uh, Alexander was assassinated uh, by a Bulgarian uh, terrorist, which which was organized by the Ustasha, which was a Croatian fascist terrorist organization at the time, and which was established in uh, Italy, which was created by uh, Anti Pavlic, who would soon become the fascist dictator of Cro of Croatia during World War II. And he was also viewed as the Hitler of uh, Croatia because Anti Pavlic would organize concentration camps and he would put Serbs and Jews in there and would exterminate them basically during World War II. And so uh, when Germany invaded Yugoslavia in, in 1941, in April 1941, when Yugoslavia refused to join the alliance with Nazi Germany, Yugoslavia would be defeated in 12 days because that was a small country and Ger and Yugoslavia would be divided into different, uh, it would be occupied by like Germany, Italy, Bulgaria, Hungary. And so those areas would be occupied in the, by uh, those various uh, countries that were at, that were member of the Axis powers. And so Croatia would become a uh, fascist fascist uh, country. It was a puppet uh, government organized by uh, Germany, Nazi Germany. And so Anti Pavlic would continue a genocidal campaign against uh, Serbs and Jews and gypsies. And so at the time, there were two uh, organ resistance movements in ex-Yugoslavia in the Occupy, uh, German occupation of Yugoslavia. There was the Chetniks that was organized by Draža Mihailović, who would soon be executed after World War II for his collaboration with the Germans. 
and there was the communist revolution, the communist resistance, which was created by Joseph Burroughs. While the Chetniks' mission was to liberate Yugoslavia from the Germans and restore the, the monarchy of what was Yugoslavia, the first Yugoslavia, they wanted to make Yugoslavia a kingdom again, while the communist resistance under Tito wanted to make Yugoslavia a communist nation, which would they would succeed in doing so after World War II. And so uh, also during that time, there was a there was a there was a fascist government in uh, Serbia. There was a lot of fascist collateral collateralist governments in Serbia that were being installed. There was the commissioner government which lasted for a very short time. And then there was the government of national salvation, Vlada Narodnog Spasa, which was organized by uh, Mila Nedic, who was a Serbian fascist dictator there. And he was installed by the German commanders and Nazi-occupied Serbia. And so that that collateralist government would not last for a long time because it would be in power from 1941 until 1944 when the Soviet Red Army, with the support of the Yugoslav resistance and the Bulgarian army, came and liberated Belgrade from the Nazi occupation. And so, yeah. And there was also a time, there was also an assassination attempt in the Belgrade by the Yugoslav resistance, by uh, Misha Rasic, who attempted to assassinate one of the Serbian uh, fascist ministers in the Nedic government. But the attempt was very unsuccessful, and he would soon be executed by uh, Milan Nedic. Milan Nedic was also viewed as a, um, as some, some was he, Milan Nedic was viewed by, as, a, as a hero to the Serbian people, while some referred to him as a criminal so because and the reason why i say that is because serbian people said that he saved serbs from um from the germans from the serbs being executed germans he saved the serbs that were being executed from germans and he would then the germans would spare them basically and so and he was also viewed as a criminal because he also ma massacred many uh Croatians and uh, gypsies and Jews, basically. And so, so after the war in 1945, Yugoslavia would become a communist nation. And uh, during the war, there were many assassination attempts, German Nazi assassination attempts on Joseph Broz Tito's life, but they were unsuccessful. And like I said, after World War II, Yugoslavia would become a communist nation, and just like all the other communist nations in Eastern Europe. And so now I'll tell you what the Yugoslav people think about uh, Tito. So a lot of people think that Tito was a great leader of Yugoslavia, and uh, even people I talked to who lived in ex-Yugoslavia said they love him a lot because he was the greatest leader because he allowed a lot of uh, Yugoslav people to immigrate to Eastern, Western Europe so they could go to find jobs overseas or uh, to different countries like the United States and West Germany and Britain and many other Western countries. And it, Yugoslavia was a combination of capitalist and communist. So it was much different compared to the Soviet Union. And the, also the Yugoslav economy was doing very well during Tito's time in office as the president of Yugoslavia. And, but like when Tito died in 1980, Yugoslav economy started to uh, collapse and an unemployment rates started to increase and inflation started to uh, uh, take place as well. And also ethnic national tension started to break out between like Serbs and uh, Croats and also Albanians and, Kos and Albanians in Kosovo and that would lead to the civil wars in ex-Yugoslavia of the 1990s. But I'll get into that in the next video. And also 
before Tito's time, before Tito died in 1980, there was a time in the early 70s where there was a lot of reforms need, needed to be uh, solved in uh, Yugoslavia that was also known as the Croatian Springs, Heravatski Proleće, which was to bring reforms into uh, Yugoslavia. And um, I'm not sure what happened, but also there was a lot of assassination attempts on Tito's life during his time as the president or general secretary of Yugoslavia. There was one time where uh, he there was an assassination attempt on Tito's life in Montenegro. And I don't know who the man was who attempted to assassinate him or the other perpetrators who attempted to assassinate him. And also the relationships between Soviet Union and Yugoslavia under Tito were not that good because Stalin attempted to invade Yugoslavia after he realized that Yugoslavia was a mix of both capitalist and communist. And so the relationship started to deteriorate between Yugoslavia and uh, Soviet Union. And so also in the 70s, like, like uh, Brezhnev asked, uh, Leonid Brezhnev, the former Soviet leader, asked Tito for help for to solve the economy, Yugoslav economy, but Tito refused to let Brezhnev help him. So hopefully you enjoy this little detailed video and uh, background of who Joseph Rose Tito was and what did Yugoslav people thought about him during his power in Yugoslavia. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Hvala na gledaju, vidimo se uskoro, prijatelj dan i doviđeni se sada.